Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to Armored Warfare News. It's Jager 262, and this is the third new vehicle that we've gotten updated for the upcoming 0.31 update to Armored Warfare. Now, unlike the previous two, which are progression vehicles for a new dealer, which is dealing in South Pacific vehicles, this is going to be a premium vehicle available through the Francine de la Roche Tech Tree or the French Tech Tree. However, it still fits the mold of the other vehicles previously covered in the last news episodes, as it is a Korean infantry fighting vehicle, the K-21. Now, this is actually, and I put it in the description in my video on the Haramu light tank coming into the game, but I kept getting the name of the South Korean vehicle that's already in Armored Warfare as a tier 10 progression light tank, which is the K-21XC8. I kept getting the name wrong, but essentially it is this hull with the XC-8 Polish turret, which is the same turret used on the Wilk tank destroyer at tier 10. So essentially we already have this a version of this vehicle in the game. We already have a South Korean vehicle in Armored Warfare. This is simply the actual Korean vehicle with the Korean made turret from the 1980s, even though the project, I believe, came to full fruition, fruition in the early 2000s. Like my other news videos, I will leave a link to this article in the description below so that way you can go through and read all about the project, the K200 series, which is the military project that actually birthed the K21. Just for this quick news episode, I'm going to highlight, I think, some of the most interesting points of this vehicle. It's going to be a mix between the Rosomach Mark I, which is a tier 8 progression Polish IFV, and the Martyr II which is a premium tier 8 IFV as well. It operates like both vehicles, at least as they're planning it and all that is subject to change, but also completely unique. And they say it will be available directly for gold in the game, which suggests that like the T40, that tier 9 premium French IFV, it won't actually be available in I don't know if they're still doing the web shop or the premium store. I haven't seen any updates there in a long time except for loot crates. Usually everything just goes straight to the new My Game Marketplace. Either way, there are two different premium shops used for Armored Warfare. I don't think this is going to appear in either. But let's break down some interesting points of this vehicle and how it's going to be balanced. So first things first, here's the real one firing, and here's the model in-game. It uses a 40mm Borfers autocannon, and they've set it up, just like all the other French tech tree vehicles, to have two different styles of play depending on what kind of guns you want to use. And that is the part that makes it like the Martyr, which uses a 52mm autocannon. It is a very powerful vehicle. The Rosamach only has 30mm and gets Peli. This is going to get um, armor fin discarding Sabos, HE, and a form of Hesh, as well as having two ATGMs on it, just like the Rosamach, for extra firepower. Now, the two different guns you can see down here is going to be between the 40mm K40 and the 40mm CTAS. Both will get Raybolt ATGMs, and that is the launcher you see on the side of the vehicle there. What makes the Raybolt interesting, and people who have used the Leclerc T40 are no stranger to this, is it is a South Korean produced Javelin missile, which means it is going to need a lock-on onto a target, and it will attack top-down, meaning that no matter how you aim it, you have to wait for the missile to lock on, and every time it will hit the roof of the tank. So unless you're going up against a Challenger 2 at Tier 9, or any of the Merkabas from Tier 8 to Tier 10, which all have reinforced roofs, you should be able to get a penetration with these missiles every single time. Now the interesting thing about this is it's going to be a lot faster than the Martyr with greater mobility. Its top speed is 75 kilometers an hour. I don't actually know how fast the Martyr 2 goes currently in game because I've never owned it. But essentially this will be able to match the mobility of the Rosamach, which is again that tier 8 wheeled IFE. 
So it's going to combine the play style of a martyr with the firepower, mobility, and survivability of the Rosamok. It gets a hard kill APS as well as ERA protection. Now the only difference with this vehicle, I don't want to say modules because they are both just a 40 millimeter cannon, nothing else about this vehicle changes, is how those will operate. The CTS cannon needs to be, or I'm sorry, the CTS cannon does not need to be reloaded. It is belt fed and will offer continuous fire. And that's going to be exactly like the Martyr or the Rosalmach in the game now. So you just point and shoot. The only difference is you're going to have to fire at about 200 rounds a minute, but you will be able to use higher penetrating um, Sabo rounds. The only downside is, is that the K40 cannon, which I forget where they break it down, oh, here, gets even more penetration from its rounds and it has a 24 round magazine. So while you will have to actually reload this clip every time you fire the 24 rounds, you get to fire them at 300 rounds a minute with only a three second reload between. That's going to operate exactly like the Griffin AFV, which is the brand new American Dream. It's an American vehicle in the Oscar Faraday tech tree, the American Dream vehicles. It is the newest addition to tier eight in the progression line. It needs to reload. It fires from a 50 millimeter auto cannon. I believe it gets 10 rounds. So this is going to be a slightly smaller cannon with double the capacity, but you will have to reload just like that. In both situations, the missiles will have the same 430 base damage and will still need to require a lock on every time you fire them. Depending on how you look at that, that's good news because you never have to worry about how your ATGMs are performing in battle between the two different types of cannons you use. You just have to worry about the cannons. Personally, I would rather go for the less penetration continuous fire because even though it does more damage per shot, if you penetrate, you do get the chance of continuous fire, which has been incredibly useful if anybody's played the Martyr, which does get Peli. So it penetrates 100% of the time like the Rosomach. This won't, but having continuous fire allows you to quickly switch between targets where you might have to be a more reserved player when you have to reload and really make those shots count, even though they do get more penetration and less damage. It's a little bit weird way to balance it, but essentially one is going to be a very aggressive AFV and the other one is going to be a more reserved tank destroyer kind of like the Leclerc T40, which also uses a 40 millimeter cannon at tier nine that needs to be reloaded with higher damage and higher pen or lower damage, higher penetration. But if you aim carefully and make all 24 of those clip rounds count, you're going to have a very effective TD. If you opt for the lower penetration at higher damage and risk it all, you're going to have a very aggressive AFE. And in both scenarios, you're going to get to use the Ray Bolt Korean Javelin, which is going to be a pretty hard hitting weapon, even though it only gets 430 base damage. So all in all, it's a very interesting vehicle. Here's some more shots of it with a camouflage. I think that's in the game right now. I don't think they're developing any kind of special skins for this vehicle as of yet, but that is a possibility since it will be a premium vehicle. It's cool. I'm excited to see it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I think it's odd that in the midst of unveiling this new tech tree that this IFV would be added as a premium vehicle to the French tech tree instead of the new dealer tree, but it does play a lot like a tier, or at least on paper, it plays a lot like a tier eight version of the Leclerc T40. So maybe that's the reasoning behind that. Not sure. Hopefully we'll get more news on new vehicles for the rest of the tech tree. That's kind of why they put this article out. They want it to have something to break it up before, and I quote, the final reveal of the rest of the new tech tree. So hopefully in the next few weeks, you'll be seeing a lot more vehicles and even maybe a unique premium vehicle just for that new dealer. Either way, please stay tuned. Hit subscribe with the little bell icon so you can get notified on any new news videos or any other Armored Warfare news you'd like to see. 
or please just give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. It lets me know that you guys are watching. It does a lot to help me continue making these videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.